Are you ready to go five pounds down and tone your arms, abs, and butt with light dumbbells? We'll grab yours and let's go. All right, beautiful bees, go ahead and put your dumbbells completely out of the way and let's get started with a warm up. And that means we're starting with some arm circles with high knees. You guys, welcome to the workout. I'm Paula B. I'm your best middle-aged fitness friend. And around here, we are all about making peace with your menopausal body by finding a healthy weight and moving in ways that feel like self-love. And do you know what feels like self-love? Finding that healthy weight with the 5-0 method, where every day we do five things that make you say, oh, I had no idea idea, it could be this simple to lose weight at our age. Every single day we eat the right number of calories, which is not necessarily less than you were eating before. Every single day we drink the right amount of water, which is half your body weight in pounds in fluid ounces of water. Every single day we get the right amount of sleep by going to bed at the same time every night, getting up at the same time every morning and not worrying about how much in between was actual sleep because sometimes it isn't. <laughs> Let's go ahead and do some arm crossers with booty kickers. Every single day we exercise moderately with a workout just like this one. And it's not necessarily more than you were doing before. And every single day, the most important part, we manage our minds by finding our thoughts and deciding if they're helpful. And the way you know whether or not a thought is helpful is how it feels. If it feels good, it's a helpful thought. If it feels anything other than good, it is not a helpful thought. Which is not to say that it's a bad thought, it just means that it's a thought that's not going to get you where you want to go towards your goal. And I have a helpful thought for you that may or may not be helpful. And in fact, today, today I've got a BOGO for us. It's a two for one deal. Today's helpful thought is it doesn't have to feel easy. And the corollary, it doesn't have to feel hard. The fact is, it can feel like how it feels and you're capable of doing whatever it is anyways. Let's go ahead and do some welcome to my homes. This one doesn't have to feel easy, but it really does, doesn't it? Welcome to my homes. It's such a beautiful stretch for your chest and getting your abs worked up and getting your balance prepared. <laughs> because sometimes mine is not amazing, but getting your balance prepared for our super fun workout today. Here's what it looks like. We've got our lightest dumbbells. And if you don't have a light enough pair, I'm gonna encourage you to do this one empty handed. The dumbbells, honestly, are for fun. They are not so that we are you know, building big muscles. We're not trying to do anything other than enjoy the variety of work that we have in our week of workouts. Here's what it looks like. I've got the handy dandy gym boss. So for intervals of 20 seconds of work and 10 seconds of rest, and we're doing teeny tiny Tabatas, which is to say that we're gonna do one exercise for three work intervals in a row before we move on to the next thing, which means that Paula has to count today. Wish me luck. We're all gonna have fun with it. Let's go ahead and grab those light, light dumbbells and let's get started with some day breaks. That means that we're gonna have our hands overhead, lower bodies doing Robert Palmer's, which is just to say that you are tapping your feet from side to side like those girls in those 1980 videos from Robert Palmer. And your hands are swaying gently overhead. And you notice, oh my gosh, right here on the very first exercise, your heart rate already came up, up, up. Let's make sure that you are moving at a pace where you can really moderate that. Now, during the rest intro, I am gonna probably go ahead and keep doing Robert Palmer's because that's what I do. Rather than just standing stock still, here we go again. This is number two of three of these day breaks. My friends, this will be a mental challenge for me today as well as a physical challenge. Having even your lightest dumbbells does that little something extra to your heart rate and this is something worth noticing. You are always in charge. Here's 10 seconds of rest. You are always always in charge of how much work you are doing at any given time on any given exercise, which is to say, and here we go for our third and final time with these day breaks. When it beeps again, we're going to get 10 seconds of rest and we're going to move on to our second exercise. So this is a repeating, no repeat. We are not coming back to day breaks, but of course, like I said, we did do them for three work intervals in a row. So if there is an exercise that you don't like, don't love, can't quite get the hang of, you're welcome to muddle through it three times and then never come back to it or you're welcome to do something else coming up next we're doing triceps curl downs we're literally going to curl our arm down while we are tapping out that same side foot to the same side nice and pulling in your core here thinking about where you are i didn't mention it for those day breaks but having your core pulled in while we are doing cardio while we are doing any exercises is one of the ways to get the best out of your workout my friends we are always thinking here's 10 seconds of rest we are always thinking about excellent form and we are always thinking 
that things should feel easy. Am I right? Here we go with those triceps curled down. This is our second of three. I know, I know that you don't think it on purpose, neither do I, but sometimes we stop ourselves from doing things because it doesn't feel easy. Because, well, that just sounds like it might be tough. And your brain is naturally wired to behave this way. This is how we are. Here's 10 seconds of rest. We are geared biologically to seek pleasure and avoid pain. And sometimes, sometimes even a little bit of pain feels like too much. When it beeps again, we're doing those triceps curled down for the third and final time. I am already working to concentrate on that. This, this is gonna be a fun day. <laughs> In fact, I will tell you a funny story. Okay, when it moves again, we're getting 10 seconds of rest and I'm gonna tell you right now that after that 10 seconds of rest, we are moving on to our next exercise, which is deadlift X's. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna come down in a deadlift and we're gonna bring the dumbbells all the way up behind us. And then as we come up, we're gonna make the letter X in front of us as well. So feet about hip width apart. As we come down, X behind us and then X in front of us. Really thinking about pushing your hips back. Yes, your arms are moving also, but your arms are really secondary to your hips. Your hips always drive a deadlift motion. You can slow this one down so that it's not quite so cardio and it's definitely thinking about where your body is in space and time. Here's 10 seconds of rest. So way back in the day, like way back in the day, you guys, I've been on YouTube since 2012. I've been on YouTube. Here we go with deadlift X's again. I've been on YouTube making videos for over 10 years. Well, for 10 years. And I will tell you, I used to do Tabatas all the time. Okay, so 10 years ago, oh, 10 years ago, I was 43. I was a baby. This is our second of three intervals. When it beeps again, here's 10 seconds of rest. So I used to do Tabatas all the time because I was 43. I mean, I had the energy to do actual Tabatas, which Tabata, by the way, it's a particular exercise protocol. This is our third and final time with deadlift X's. It's a specific pro exercise protocol, which is, it's a hit type workout. You do 20 seconds of work and 10 seconds of rest, just like this, but you go at like full speed. I mean, you are meant to be doing something cardio at the absolute max of your heart rate. Okay, 10 seconds of rest. And coming up next, we're doing wide open side kicks. So your elbows are gonna be just about shoulder height and you're gonna kick one leg out to one side. Really, you're just gonna raise your leg out to the side. You don't really have to be like energetically kicking. You can if you want to, but you certainly don't have to with light dumbbells in my hands. I am really thinking about my energy level. To me, that means I'm moving a little bit slower than it would be if I was empty handed. Making sure that your core is pulled in, of course. But anyway, so I used to do Tabatas all the time. Oh, and Tabata, by the way, that was what I was finishing up with. So so Tabata, here's 10 seconds of rest, means that you do the same exercise eight times in a row. It is a four minute workout, essentially. And you're meant to work so hard. Here we go with those wide open side kicks. You are meant to work so hard in that four minute interval, uh, you know, of intervals, that that is basically your workout. Like that is absolute max of your heart rate. It is it is a really specific kind of training for a person who is already in excellent shape. Okay, here's 10 seconds of rest and then, I sure hope this is the third time with wide open side kicks because if it's our fourth time, I counted wrong. <laughs> That's what I do. So this was, this is the story that I'm telling you is that I used to just rely on myself to be able to count to eight and it turns out I cannot. <laughs> So many old Tabata videos, first of all, that were done in a way that it was basically just kind of a regular hit workout and it wasn't true Tabata, which most workouts are not. Here's 10 seconds of rest. Coming up next, we're going to do low, he low swinging heel digs. So your heel is going to dig in front of you while your hands, they're swinging low, except for the fact that they are going to get up pretty high. Honestly, I mean, they're just not going up over your head. You are welcome to get them rocking as much or as little as you want to. Every time, it's always up to you. But so the thing about Tabata, like I said, it's meant to be like top tier. It is, it is like Olympian level exercise. And frankly, so are HIIT workouts. Here's 10 seconds of rest. A HIIT workout is not meant for beginners. If you see something that says HIIT and beginner, which I have quite a few of those, because everybody wants a HIIT workout. Everybody thinks a HIIT workout is the best way to lose weight. However, HIIT workouts really aren't for beginners. HIIT workouts are for people who are already at a pretty high level of exercise intensity who are basically taking it to the next level. It's like speed work where you are just trying to get better. You are not trying to get in shape. Here's 10 seconds of rest and then we're doing that for the third and final time, hopefully. <laughs> 
because apparently I can't even count to three. So, so I have in my, in my old, old, old inventory of YouTube, first of all, I have well over a thousand videos and quite a few of them are really, really old Tabatas. We're in, we are doing nowhere near eight intervals of work because I quite frankly could not count to eight. In fact, here's 10 seconds of rest. This is why I made it only three today, so that maybe I could keep up with it. Coming up next, we're doing twisting high knees, which is exactly what it sounds like. Your torso is twisting to one side while you're bringing up one high knee at a time. And your hands, for me, my hands tend to stay right about my chest level, more or less. Really depends on where you are and how moderate this feels. If you feel like you are coming right up against the edge of moderate, remember, this also doesn't have to feel hard. It doesn't have to feel easy, but it doesn't have to feel hard. There is nothing about the work, here's 10 seconds, of rest of losing weight that has to feel easy for you and it also doesn't have to feel hard in fact you know what it should feel it should feel like Goldilocks it should feel good it should feel good enough it should feel good enough to sustain if you are trying to do something that doesn't feel if you are saying to yourself, well, this doesn't feel easy, and I wish it did, you know, with the parenthetical, I wish it did, and or this doesn't feel easy is kind of code for this doesn't feel like something I want to keep doing. Here's 10 seconds of rest, by the way, and then we're going to do those twisting high knees for the third and final time. That, my friends, is an excellent indicator that that thing that you are doing is something that you are not going to continue doing for any real length of time in order to get the kind of results that you want. The things that you are doing for weight loss should feel doable. Easy enough. Not necessarily easy, but easy enough. Here's 10 seconds of rest coming up next. We're doing shooting stars. Okay. Whew, so this is the one where we are tipping one way, pointing that arm out while the opposite foot is kicking out the opposite direction. And yes, I'm getting my disco fingers on here. <laughs> Many moons ago, these were called disco dancers because we would keep that second foot just tapping on the ground. I changed the name to shooting stars because of the star balance move that we occasionally do. And that little bit of balance who really makes a difference, doesn't it? Here's 10 seconds of rest coming up next. We're doing those shooting stars for the second of three times. I'm going to keep saying what we're doing. I figure if I keep narrating it, maybe that makes it a little bit easier for me to keep on track. <laughs> My friends, the tasks you are doing. I would love for you to take an inventory of, like a mental slash physical inventory of the things that you are doing for weight loss. Here's 10 seconds of rest and then coming up next, we're doing those shooting starts for the third and final time. If you are doing things while basically gritting your teeth and hanging on for dear life, if you are white knuckling your way through, you are doing something that is not sustainable for the long term. You are doing something that may or may not get you the results that you are looking for. Honestly, it kind of depends on, on how long it's going to take you to lose weight. The fact is you might, you might get to your weight loss goal with straight up willpower, gritting your teeth and making it happen. Here's 10 seconds of rest and coming up next, we're doing big arm side shuffles. So I'm going to scoot over here a little bit to the side. We're going to shuffle to our way to the side while making a nice big O right in front of us. Swinging those dumbbells around, making sure that you are in control of them by keeping your core in nice and tight because we do not want to just willy-nilly lose our dumbbells, <laughs> my friend. It doesn't have to be easy, but it also doesn't have to feel like too much. Here's 10 seconds of rest. The truth of it is that the things that you are doing right now for weight loss are essentially the exact same things that you're going to do for weight maintenance. And let that be your guide as to whether or not you are doing something that you could do for the rest of your life. I know I mention it, maybe not all the time, but every once in a while, I mention that when you are thinking about moderate exercise, the way, the, the rule of thumb to think about is that this is something, here's 10 seconds of rest, that you could do every single day for the rest of your life. And truthfully, I'm not just talking about exercise. If you can't eat the way you are eating every single day for the rest of your life, then that means, well, frankly, 
Here's what it means to me. It means that you better start eating dessert. It means that you better start adding in that glass of wine. Make room for the things that you find pleasurable. Food is supposed to be pleasurable and it's also fuel. Coming up next, we're doing cross back jacks. Okay, so your hands are doing jumping jacks. I'm gonna come up so much closer to you because I don't wanna kick the chair or the glass. So your, your lower body is doing a cross back, which is essentially a curtsy lunge, but you certainly don't have to come all the way down into a curtsy lunge. You help yourself to whatever feels best to you. It doesn't have to be easy, but it also doesn't have to be hard. My friend, it should feel just right. It should feel doable. It should feel like a challenge. Some days, sometimes, there will be absolutely times. Here's 10 seconds of rest. There will absolutely be times where you're like, I'm just not sure if I can fit everything in that I want. And or there's just not room for the things that feel very pleasurable for me today. That means that it might not feel easy, but also so if it feels like every single day is a struggle, truly, if it feels like every single day is a struggle, I have some very practical advice for you. First of all, figure out what you're thinking, but also just look at your numbers. It might be that you're trying to eat too little. It might be that you're trying to restrict yourself. I think that was only two. Ah, oh, that might've been three. Y'all, we might be doing extra. We're gonna do one more, because I totally forgot, because I got really into that. I think that was three though. Well, you know what? Here we are. In for a penny, in for a pound. Worst case scenario, we've got an extra 30 seconds here and you are welcome because everybody loves crossback jacks, right? <laughs> Maybe I'll cut one off the other end. You guys, coming up next, we've got 10 seconds of rest. I'm going to pay attention and we are doing can-cans. Okay, I'm going to start verbalizing it again. That's my problem. I tried not to tell you how many times we were doing this, like I was trying to just talk and do stuff. This is the first time we are doing can-cans. A knee and a kick and a knee and a kick. This is the first interval of can-cans and we are done with this. And when we are done with this interval, we will move on to the second one. But this is still the first one. <laughs> you guys, counting doesn't feel easy. <laughs> And frankly, it also doesn't feel hard. The problem with counting is that I'm simply not paying attention to it. I'm trying to tell you stories about how you really can make this easier. And also, frankly, you can make it harder. I mean, we frequently do. Here's the second time that we are doing can-cans. This is our second interval of can-cans. We only have one more interval of can-cans after this. We can-can get the second one done because this is our second interval of can-cans. <laughs> My friend, if you are really trying to restrict yourself, here's 10 seconds of rest. If you are trying to eat only healthy foods, if you are trying to eat foods that you don't normally eat, if you are trying to eat things and deny yourself things that you love, here's the third interval of can-cans. This is our third and final interval of can-cans. And when we are done with this one, we are moving on to the next exercise. And I'm gonna verbalize that one too. The truth of it is, that you, I'm gonna say need to, because it really is, it really is imperative. It really is imperative that you figure out what works for you. Coming up next, we're doing diving airplanes. I love this one. <laughs> diving airplanes. We have our hands out to the side. We are diving to one direction and then diving to the other. You are welcome to make airplane noises. Because that's pretty fun. Making sure that your core is pulled in nice and tight. Do you feel this work in your abs and obliques? Yes, indeed. That's where it is. Plus, we get that little bit of balance work by standing on one foot, really throwing ourselves off balance from side to side. Excellent job. Here's 10 seconds of rest. That was our first interval of diving airplanes. We have two more. I'm going to verbalize it. Here is our second interval of diving airplanes. <laughs> I highly, highly recommend that you find a way to make room, if not in your diet every single day. And I really specifically use that word diet because my friend, diet does not mean restriction. It means the method of eating. Here's the end of our second interval. This is rest. And then coming up next is our third interval of diving airplanes. Here we go. <laughs> the way you eat, the collection of foods that you eat is your diet. I strongly encourage you, if you are me, to have dessert every day. I strongly encourage you to make room in your diet because it's not restrictive for the foods that just that you love, that you don't want to give up, that you don't want to leave behind. Here's 10 seconds of rest. And you guys, coming up next, we're doing side shakes. This is the one where we have both of our hands together. We are twisting to one side and shaking the weights 
out to one side, which of course totally just reminded me. Do you remember shake weights? That wasn't all that long ago. How they claimed that this was like the thing that could get you in shape just like two minutes a day, or probably four minutes a day, I bet it was Tabata. Oh, I bet it was a Tabata of shake weights. <laughs> That was the end of our first interval of shake weights or side shakes. <laughs> We're gonna do two more and I'm counting them. I wonder if I should take off the last one. I don't want to because I really want to do at least, at least three <laughs> of every one of these. And I'm, I really think that we probably did four of <laughs> more than one of the exercises. This is our second interval of side shakes, which means that we only have one more interval of side shakes coming up after this. 10 seconds of rest. Excellent job. Okay. When it beeps again, we're doing those side shakes for the third and final time. And it is our last exercise. However, when we're done with this, oh my goodness, my friends, we are not quite done. Or we are done, but we're not quite finished. <laughs> I've got a finisher for us. We are gonna get 10 seconds of rest. And then I have one more exercise that we are actually not doing as a Tabata. It is a balance exercise that we're gonna do one interval on each side as we do, because we are doing super slow sprinters. I'm gonna start by standing on my left foot. You're gonna bring your opposite elbow and your opposite knee together in the center, and then you're going to do a full extension out. So this is super slow. As we have been moving relatively quickly, bringing our heart rate up, this is a nice extra challenge. When it beeps again, by the way, that's not 10 seconds of rest, it's 10 seconds where we are holding that full extension. Opposite elbow and knee together, and then full extension on one side of the same arm and same leg, so hold it in that extension for this 10 seconds. When it beeps, we're gonna switch sides and go directly into the super slow sprinters on the other side. You're doing such a great job. Other side, opposite elbow, opposite knee, and full extension. Whew, doggies, all of a sudden, that got kind of tough, didn't it? Well, you know what? It doesn't have to feel easy, but it also doesn't have to feel hard. If this feels like this is gonna push you past moderate, my friend, you drop those weights. You hold onto a table. Here we are in full extension for 10 seconds, and you make this work for the final couple of seconds of this exercise, because when we are done, we will be better than done. Ah, my friends, we are finished. Let me turn off that timer. What a great job you did. Come on, timer, there you go. All right, go ahead and put those weights completely down and let's cool it down. Some nice big arm circles. Whew, some more Robert Palmers. <laughs> really just tapping those feet, bringing your heart rate down very, very gently, very nicely. Here's the thing that your body does sometimes, not sometimes, here's the thing that your body does every time. When you exercise, while you are exercising, your body is kind of taking stock of what's going on. It's like, okay, what kind of energy needs do we have here? What's going on here? It will very, I mean, it almost always releases endorphins. That's one of the things that happens. But it also, either during exercise or almost immediately thereafter, it will frequently release cortisol because cortisol is an anti-inflammatory. It's actually really good for you right up until it's not. But what happens when your body releases all those hormones, all those chemicals to like, kind of manage your heart rate and figure out what's going on, it also releases another batch of hormones and chemicals that mitigate those responses. So sometimes after you've been exercising, the secondary, here let's go ahead and open it up nice and big and then close it up. Give yourself a nice hug and a pat on your sweaty back. The secondary response, which is like bringing your heart rate down, bringing your sweat rate down, doing all the things that bring you back to normal. Sometimes that secondary response is a little bit too much and all of a sudden your heart rate plummets. This is why sometimes people pass out if they just like stand still immediately after exercising. It's why your cool down, it doesn't have to be long, it doesn't have to be hard. But it does have to be, it actually does have to be a little bit easy. It has to be a little bit gentle where you are still moving so that your body can balance itself out beautifully. My friend, you did such a great job today. Thank you so much for working out with me. Make sure that you click that subscribe button before you go and I'll see you tomorrow.